Now at 11, the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. Tonight, the victims, the gunmen, and the search for a motive. And good evening. I'm Juliette Goodrich, live in Las Vegas. This shooting happening nearly 24 hours ago from a window from the Mandalay Bay. And tonight, we're learning so much more. At least 59 people were killed, 527 others injured when a gunman opened fire at a country music festival. The shooter has been identified as 64 year old Stephen Paddock. Officers recovered 23 firearms from his hotel room and 19 at his home in Mesquite, Nevada. Now, let's give you a better idea of how this all unfolded. Thousands of people were at the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival across the street from the Mandalay Bay. Authorities say Paddock opened fire from his hotel room about 950 feet away from the concert. The bullets rained down from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Resort onto a crowd of about 22,000 concert goers as country music star Jason Aldean took the stage. So there's a shooting, there's a shooting. At first, many in the crowd mistook the gunshots for fireworks. We were really confused because we couldn't see any of the smoke. The shooter, identified as 64 year old Stephen Paddock, paused several times, once for nearly a minute, presumably to reload. I'm seeing local flashes in the middle of Mandalay Bay on the north side, it's like one of the middle floors. Be advised, it is automatic fire. Fully automatic fire from an elevated position. Take cover. As police made their way toward the source of the gunfire, hundreds of rounds slammed into buildings and people. We can't worry about victims. We need to stop the shooter before we have more victims. Anybody have eyes on on this, on this shooter? Once they gain entry into the hotel uh, in conjunction with security and through phone calls from patrons, they were able to uh, call it down to a possible floor. We believe it's the northernmost room on either side on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay. I need to know if uh, we have that floor evacuated other than our suspects. We got the uh, snipers going up. We have the hallway contained. The gunman fired at officers through the doorway of his hotel room. By the time the SWAT team stormed in, Paddock had already killed himself. Tonight, outside Vegas City Hall, residents and politicians lit candles and held signs reading, Vegas Strong. We will not be tarnished by this one sick, horrible human being that he thought he could destroy who and what we are. That will never happen. And tonight, Las Vegas hospitals and trauma centers still dealing with the critically injured, and there are many of them. And for those who made it out alive and uninjured, tonight I can tell you they are still dealing with the emotional trauma of it all. A somber Las Vegas this evening, as many people who came here to have fun leave shell shocked and return home. Yeah, we, we took off running and, you know, hit the ground and. When we thought it was safe to get up, we ran to an exit. So. We just looked for each other and made sure that all five of us got out. It's just unimaginable. It's nothing what you don't go to things like this thinking that something as terrible is going to happen, and it's just not fair. And now security stepped up more than ever along the Las Vegas Strip and even from hotel to hotel. As people walk along the Strip, this huge electronic billboard outside the MGM says it all. Messages about blood donations, prayers to victims, and gratitude to the first responders, and a phone number to call about those still missing. Single shots, like pop, pop. Tony Kessler of Brentwood was in the middle of the chaos and barrage of gunfire. People are screaming, I've been shot. Um, people are being drug out. My girlfriends ended up in a vehicle that took them to the airport. And she said she ran past a, a girl laying on the ground in a pile of her blood all by herself. I, I, Ready to get home. Mm -hmm.
and some are not home. Tonight, a Bay Area woman is among the missing, Stacy Etcheber. She was at the festival with her husband, an off duty San Francisco police officer. When shots rang out, he told her to run while he helped the victims. Stacy didn't have her phone or ID and hasn't been seen since. And tonight, we're learning the identities of some of the victims. 29 year old Sonny Melton was a nurse from Tennessee. He died shielding his wife, Heather, a doctor and Sonoma County native. Rachel Parker was a 10 year veteran of the police department in Manhattan Beach. She was 33 years old. Jenny Parks, a mother of two, was a kindergarten teacher from Los Angeles County. Her husband, Bobby, was injured. They were childhood sweethearts. Angie Gomez was a former cheerleader at Riverside Poly. She graduated two years ago. And Paige Gasper, a student at Sonoma State, was shot in the attack, but will survive. I reached down and grabbed my side and noticed that my hand was all wet. And I was like, well, somebody, like, you know, spilled their drink on me or something. And uh, next thing I knew that it was warm and red, and I saw it, you know, coming down my leg. Paige suffered a liver laceration and a fractured rib. She's recovering in the hospital tonight. Now, last night, about this time, authorities still did not know if they had one shooter or several active shooters. Many people were running in the streets here, running for cover, even hiding overnight in places just because they didn't know who they were dealing with. Well, tonight, we do know who we're dealing with. We're getting more information about the shooter, and for that, we're going to go to KPX 5 Sharon Chin in our newsroom to give us a little bit of insight about who he is. Juliet, so far no hint of a criminal history and no known ties to terror. His brother says he just sent their mother a new walker. So why the shooting spree? Investigators say 64-year-old Stephen Paddock checked into the Mandalay Bay Hotel Thursday and spent three days gambling in casinos. He stockpiled a cache of 23 weapons in his hotel rooms in several suitcases. Two rifles on tripods stood at the windows with hundreds of rounds of ammunition. Law enforcement searched his home in the retirement community of Mesquite and found 19 more firearms, explosives, and ammunition. They also searched his house in Reno. And this is asteroid fell out of the sky. His brother, Eric Paddock of Florida, says there's nothing in his past suggesting violence or mental illness. Nothing. Or anything. Like Not nothing. No religious affiliation, no political affiliation. No, he, he just hung out. Authorities say Stephen Paddock was a retired accountant, but recently became a professional gambler who won large jackpots. He was also a licensed hunter and a pilot with two planes who rented, owned, and sold properties in four states over 40 years. His late father, Benjamin Paddock, was once on the FBI's most wanted list, a bank robber described as a psychopath. And before last night's attack, Stephen Paddock's only run in with the law was this parking ticket eight years ago. KPIX 5 security analyst Jeff Harp says investigators are digging deep into his background. They'll look at all of his social media, if he had any. Uh, they'll certainly look at all of any electronic media he had with him at the hotel, at home. They will dissect forensically every aspect of this person's life. Officers say they've spoken to Paddock's girlfriend, Marilou Danley, who's out of the country. They say she is no longer a person of interest. Investigators expected to trace how the gunman got the 42 firearms recovered at the home and hotel. Gun store owners in Nevada and Utah say Paddock legally bought four weapons from them in the past year and passed the background checks. Juliet. Sharon, thank you. All of those weapons brought to this hotel last Thursday onto the 32nd floor. Uh, I should mention that President Trump will be here on Wednesday meeting with first responders and also victims, family members. And Liz, we're learning that some of those first responders were off duty Alameda County firefighters who didn't run away when they heard the gunshots. They run, they ran toward victims to help them and help them with triage and get into hospitals. And tonight, we say thank you to all of those responders. Some true heroes, no doubt. Juliet, the sheriff says assistance is also available for family members traveling to Vegas to search for loved ones. 
Yes, we're hearing that uh, hotels like the Bellagio are offering free rooms to family members. Um, some airlines, Allegiance, offering flights to family members to come down. Uh, and you can see all of the marquees here our prayers for the victims, our gratitude for the brave first responders, a lot of information on the marquees to help people relocate family members. And the city is setting up assistance centers to help families identify their loved ones as well. So you see the lights, you see all the traffic, but I can tell you it's a lot quieter here tonight. Liz, a lot of people healing here in Las Vegas tonight. I'm sure very somber. All right, Juliet, thank you. We'll check it back in with you in just a few minutes.